Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Theatrecom video, we're going to be discussing new stories which, as usual, have popped up in the tech industry over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Ryzen 2 and 3 being shrunk down to 7nm, because it's apparently rather difficult, because it's not just shrinking things down in the traditional sense, but also a re-engineering of the actual architecture, so according to Mark Papermaster get into that in a second. Then some images of Vega and some information on Vega has popped up on the internet, including pricing, which is making people rather nervous if these rumors are accurate. We'll get to that in a second. And then we're going to finish the video with USB 3.2 because it is fast, very fast with its transfer times. Anyway, starting things out with the Zen 2 and Zen 3 architecture. So for those who don't know, Ryzen in its current form is built on 14nm. And there is an interview currently um, gaining a lot of traction with EE Times. I'd like to thank viewer Joe for this particular link. Very informative. Now Mark Papermaster, who is AMD's CTO, has been discussing the company's future plans. And has said that the jump and preparation for 7nm is a pretty damn big change. In fact, both the foundry itself, as well as the design teams themselves, have had to quote double their efforts. Moving to 7nm is the toughest lift I've seen in a number of generations, he said during the interview. And in fact, he said that um, the 7nm is a long node, like 28nm. So you have to have a long node. It lets design teams focus on microarchitecture and system solutions. There are a number of reasons, as there tends to be for the difficulties, but one of them is the requirement for new CAD tools. And the second is a deeper cooperation with foundries and the EDA, also known as the Electronic Design Automation Industry. Mark has also said that there are going to be some difficulties for the actual foundries itself when it comes to the chips on the 7NM process. So it's going to certainly be the long haul. And... Don't forget that Global Foundries have been AMD's partners when it comes to the CPU. Meanwhile, TSMC is for the GPU. And it appears at least that Papermaster and AMD as a whole are not going to be changing this anytime soon. They're pretty happy with that for the moment. And he feels that the companies, that would be of course TSMC and Global Foundries, are being, quote, aggressive in 7nm. And of course, this is good for the industry. According to the Global Foundries website, 7NM FinFat, I'll read out the quote verbatim, this technology provides world-class performance, power, area, and cost advantages from 7NM scaling based on 3D FinFat transistor architecture and optical lithography with EUV compatibilities at key levels. Uh, 7LP uh, technology delivers more than twice the logic and SRAM density, 40% performance boost and 60% plus power saving reductions compared to 14nm foundry FinFET offerings. All of this, of course, is a positive thing for, um, well, Ryzen 2 when it is finally launched. And it looks like that's probably going to happen at some point 2018 to possibly 2019. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a small slippage. It looked with the original, you know, uh, roadmap that it looked to be some point mid 2018 so essentially you could say 12 months from now but i wouldn't be surprised if we see that slipping 18 months obviously i'm not saying amd have told us this but just from these comments i wouldn't be surprised if, if it happens but let's hope it doesn't okay next one is going to be rx vega this one a number of you actually messaged me on facebook about and it's quite interesting so the website hard ocp um, managed to get hold of an RX Vega graphics card. And the chap, Kyle, was asked to basically test out the graphics card against the GTX 1080 based setup and essentially get gamers in to do some blind testing. This, you might feel, is quite familiar to the various uh, RX Vega events. Now, what exactly Kyle has been doing, I wonder if he's been conducting some benchmarks. Essentially, it's being done at his house, this is according to him, and he had basically the graphics card for less than a day. I imagine he's probably under more NDAs than 
someone who works at MI6 though, so he probably can't post too much stuff, but there is a blind gaming test video that he's currently editing, which is probably going to mean it's going to, you know, appear over the next day or two, and one can make the assumption we're probably not going to be seeing frame rate uh, counters or anything like that, but hey, it's kind of cool. I had hesitated to include this pricing information leak. It originates in Sweden, but I have a feeling if I didn't, like, I'd get 20 emails on the subject, so I figure I will, but be warned, these leaks and such pricing information is at best, well, early. So if this is accurate, it is still very early inf uh, pricing information, but I'll tell you the basics. So a website by the name of Nordic Hardware uh, is saying that they have a formed with their sources in a Swedish market, in the Swedish market, not a Swedish market, the Swedish market, and they have confirmed that some retailers in Sweden have already received pricing information for, well, RX Vega. Now this early pricing information tells us that the price tag for Vega is around 7,000 Swedish kroner, which equals to about 850 US dollars. This is not including any VAT or anything like that. Now, I just want to point out 850 US dollars obviously does depend upon the direction of the wind at the time and currency exchange rates pretty much change on a whim. Now, what's kind of weird is if you start adding VAT, retailers' margins and all of that stuff, it looks like this car could potentially be about, well, over a thousand US dollars. However, there are some points to be made. Accordingly, the pricing will vary depending on, upon the manufacturers, the models, and all of that stuff. So the pricing is basically just a reference. It's, I wouldn't go as far as even to say a recommended retail price. It's almost like saying it's roughly going to be this. However, here's where things get a bit more complex. These Swedish retailers have actually said that the pricing feels, um, these are their words, not my words, feels wrong. And if you consider that the GTX 1080 Ti costs around 8,000 um, Swedish krona, and includes that, by the way, whereas the 1080 is even cheaper, it's around the 5,600 mark. What's going on? So this really, to me, is quite confusing, to be honest, and that's the reason I'm putting this out, because I want you to be aware of it, because otherwise I'm going to have some people message me and say, hey, just yesterday you were talking about another website, bitsandchips.it, on their Twitter account, saying that Vega was, quote, fast and cheap. So I've no idea what's going on here. It's possible that this is either another RX Vega card, which is really fast, possibly even faster than the ties, although that would be kind of a stretch, or there is a miscommunication going on here, and basically the retailers got sent the wrong figures, or the retailers or their sources are wrong on these figures, or something really weird is going on. Or possibly Vega is just much faster than what we have led to believe, but I don't know. Personally, I'm of the mindset that the most realistic options right now is, one, AMD have basically been, I, get, I don't like to use the term, but sandbagging. So they've been essentially limiting frame rates. They've been doing everything they can to, under, I wouldn't say undermine Vega, but to kind of, uh, yeah, it's going to be okay. It's going to be about as fast as the GTX 1080, guys. Don't worry. And then they basically released the product quite, unexpectedly much faster than a 1080, possibly even faster as 1080 time, maybe even a bit faster. Another possibility in these rumors are inaccurate, or the other possibility is that because they feel that obviously you've got mining prices and all of the other bits and pieces, HBM2 is quite expensive, maybe that's the reason. But mining right now isn't quite so popular as it was, like say a couple of months ago. I think right now, in terms of pricing, let alone performance, because we went through the benchmarks just yesterday, and it appears with the 3D Mark results that have popped up, it's about on par with a GTX 1080, within a few hundred points either way. So whether those um, Fire Strike results are incorrect, whether there's still room left in the tank, whether it's a different version of Vega, whatever, we just don't know. It's a lot of speculation on my part, and quite frankly, we could probably make a lot of educated guesses based upon versions and all of that stuff, but we simply don't really know for 
And finally, talk about USB 3.2. And <laughs> now I know USB might not sound so as exciting as the number of cores in a Ryzen processor or any of that stuff, but hey, it is still kind of cool. So the USB 3.0 promoter group have announced the pending release of the USB 3.2 specifications. Now it is an incremental upgrade, so it's not like, you know, going from USB 2 to USB 3, but the speed differences are rather impressive to say the least. In fact, we could see double the transfer speeds to 20 Gbps, which is absolutely just phenomenal when you consider it wasn't too long ago that we were getting just, it felt like anyway, like kilobytes per second. Uh, so how is it doing this? Well, it's a very simple approach. And the crux of the solution really comes down to the fact that USB Type-C cables were designed to take multi-lane operation. And essentially this means it has scalable performance. And so this is transitioning now to USB 3.2 hosts and devices. So now you can have, let's say, two lanes of 10 Gbps in certain device configurations, for example, let's say external um, hard drives or anything else that requires speed-sensitive operations. Now, it will take a while for this to take effect. It's probably going to be, let's say, even 18 months, possibly a little less before we see, you know, mass production of this stuff. But still, uh, the specification now is at the very final review uh, phase, so we should see final specs pop up later this year, which is pretty cool. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff. Like, share, subscribe. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.